Hi, this is Melissa Cantwell with Children's Wisconsin talking to you today about childhood stress. So first, we want to talk about what is stress. So stress is how our brain and body responds to any demand. Our brain is constantly trying to take in what's happening around us, determining whether it's a threat and how we should respond to it. Um, so stress happens when our body decides that whatever is going on or whatever triggered that is becoming too much for our brain. And so our brain is just trying to figure out how it's going to respond and what it needs to put in motion in order to respond. Um, it can be triggered by a one-time thing. It could be a short-term occurrence or it can happen repeatedly over time. Um, and that changes our response to it as well. Um, and so it can be an internal stressor or an internal thing that causes the stress or external. Um, so it could be something that's happening around us. It could be a test at school that's causing extra stress, or it could be internal of something that and how we're talking to ourselves or something that we create as a stressor. Um, and that's really kind of things related to worries. And so who's affected by stress? Obviously, everybody's ex affected by stress. It affects people of all ages, parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, teachers, um, and it begins in infancy, and it just keeps going as the child is growing up. They're gaining more responsibility and having different and maybe more expectations placed on them. But ultimately, everyone experiences stress. Um, so stress in young kids will manifest itself in kind of two different ways. Um, one is changes in behaviors, and the other one is physical illnesses or pain. Um, so sometimes kids don't have the vocabulary or the understanding of feelings or thoughts enough to understand that maybe that stomach ache means that they're stressed. So it's hard for them sometimes to connect those physical events with what's happening in their body. So a child might be stressed about being successful in math class because he doesn't understand the material. Um, but now every day in math class, he starts to experience a stomach ache. Um, so connecting those two situations as a cause and effect, that makes a lot of sense to a lot of us as adults, but it's not always obvious to children and it can be kind of scary or unknown then as to why is this pain happening? Why do I have headaches? And then that can make them not want to do it. Um, so sometimes that understanding is helpful for us as adults when we're looking at how kids are responding. So here's some additional signs of stress in kids. Um, irritability or moodiness, um, physical ailments like we talked about, headaches, stomach aches, nausea, um, all of those things. I mean, things that we see in adults as well. Um, withdrawing from activities or change in like interests and acti activities, um, routinely expressing worries. Um, a lot of times that's going to come out in play if you're looking at really young kids. Um, you can hear complaints more than usual. It could be about a specific topic. So in like that math example, you might hear more complaining about math than English homework, um, crying more often, um, surprisingly fearful reactions in situations that maybe they wouldn't have previously, um, sometimes some separation anxiety, so clinging to a parent or to a teacher more. Um, sleeping changes tend to be a really big indicator that there's something going on um, just because stress changes the way that we sleep. I'm sure as adults we notice that as well. Um, and then eating habit changes as well. So one of the things that's important to look at is how do you behave when you're stressed out and what changes that you notice in yourself? Because um, sometimes it's important for us to be aware of it as adults and as caregivers to little ones um, because they're also noticing that within us too sometimes because sometimes kids are more receptive than we think that they are. Um, and then it's also kind of thinking about too how you notice your child behaves when they're stressed and is it similar to how you behave? Um, maybe it's the total opposite, but maybe it's the same. Um, and so children are always watching and learning how to behave in certain situations, but they're also going to develop their own unique reactions. So they might not follow you exactly in how you handle stress, but um, so sometimes they're going to develop their own ways as well. So ch children can be sensitive to the changes that happen around them, especially the feelings and reactions of their parents or other important caregivers in their lives. Um, that doesn't mean that everything's going to throw them completely into turmoil or out of whack. 
Um, but sometimes some things will. Um, and some kids ultimately are more sensitive to stress than others. Um, and that just has to do with temperament and flexibility of a child. And each kid is so unique and so different um, that some kids are just going to be more sensitive to it than others. Um, but there's always differences in coping. And so how we cope and manage stress can be learned and improved even as adults. We're never too old to learn a new trick. Um, so some children cope with stress more effectively and recover from stressful events more quickly than others. Um, again, that kind of goes back into their adaptability, their temperament, um, a whole bunch of different factors. Um, understanding how your child copes best, best with stress is significant in helping them manage stress in the future. Sometimes we have to help be that regulating body, and if we see signs of stress, sometimes we have to sometimes teach them to be able to recognize those signs by helping them with coping skills in those moments. Because um, sometimes they don't have the understanding, you know how we talked about that cause and effect piece earlier? Sometimes we can see it from the outside looking in, but we have to help teach the kids to be able to connect kind of that cause and effect. Um, and we can do a variety of ways. And really it's just helping them learn to manage it because then they're gonna start to learn that the ways that they're responding when they're feeling stressed will be to go towards positive coping skills in ways that help them relieve those feelings, whether they can connect it to what's happening or not, it still will give them a lot of skills that'll translate really well into their future. Um, and so one thing is to talk with your kids. It's okay for them to approach you about their worries and show them that it's okay. Um, it gives you a better sense of what's stressing them out. Um, and it's really the only way to sometimes get a clear understanding of what they're thinking and feeling. Um, and so sometimes like what we believe stresses a kid out it may be different than what um, the child is stressed out about. I know that that's happened on so many occasions or even just with other adults where we think that we know what they're upset, they're stressed or upset about. And then we go to talk to them and it's something totally different than what we thought it is. So don't be afraid to open that door of that conversation. And don't be afraid to tell kids when you are feeling worried about things, they don't need to know the burden of all of it, but you know, it's okay for you to name your feelings and express that in front of the children as well. Again, as long as it's appropriate and with boundaries, you don't need to tell them every bit of it, but it's okay that if you they see you naming your feelings and being willing to talk about it, they're going to be more likely to name it and be willing to talk about it as well. Um, so sleep is a huge thing. We talked about how sleep disturbance can be such an indicator of something going on and some stress happening. Um, so trying to enforce a scheduled bedtime as much as possible, reinforcing the importance of sleep, um, and then looking at the environment that facilitates sleep. So we know that trying to limit screen time before bed, having a good routine, um, things like that, uh, looking at the sleep environment, is it quiet? Is it dark enough for them to sleep? Um, those sorts of things. So doing the best we can with having the best sleep environment possible, and then just kind of being patient and persistent with it because there are going to be times that we can do everything right and the kid is still gonna struggle a little bit. So um, finding ways throughout the day when it comes to sleep stuff might help eliminate some of that overnight if they're waking up a lot or things like that. Um, so there are some ways we can model stress release and, and help enforce coping skills. Um, yoga is a good one. I do know there's some good resources out there. Even I think YouTube might have some basic yoga poses that you can do with the kids. Um, there's a lot of different breathing stuff. Um, if you have really little ones, Elmo has a great belly breathing song. It's super catchy. It'll get stuck in your head. Um, there are also a lot of books that talk about breathing techniques, um, but just even as simple as like holding your breath as you count to four or inhale as you count to four, hold it while you count to four and exhale while you count to four. Um, doing that with them and next to them is going to help teach them that skill and they'll probably start to do it on their own after a couple of times. Um, if you have a kid that's not really so much into deep breathing but likes bubbles, bubbles are a great thing because they, whether the kid knows it or not, they have to focus on their breathing to be able to do it. Um, so in a way it reinforces the same thing that we're looking at with deep breathing by blowing bubbles. Um, Coloring is another great option. It engages both sides of your brain, so it's gonna help, um, just kinda help with processing and calming down. 
um, journaling if the kid's old enough to kind of have that. There's a whole bunch of different versions out there of journaling that you can do kind of for different ages um, and a whole bunch of different topics in different formats. Um, and then any sort of physical activity that you can do is going to be helpful as well. Um, going for a walk right now is always a good one, but other sorts of physical activities. Um, I've seen things where there have been in school courses set up or um, even just playing tag, running around the house or the yard, um, things like that that are safe, but that are help get out some of that energy and some of it up. Um, another great way to help kids manage stress is with spending time together. Um, play is going to be a huge one. Um, even look at what play looks, lower stress levels. It improves cognitive abilities, their attention span, problem solving skills. Um, it allows them to express themselves in a different way. Um, and if you are able to play, it really might show them that really that you're dedicating that time to them. Try to put your phone away and other distractions. Um, and even if it's focusing on multiple kids at once, there's nothing that says you can't play with multiple kids, but really giving up all of your kids being really present in that moment and giving them attention. Um, I also encourage you to let them take the lead in play and just see what happens and see how your kid responds to it. Um, but I think it'll be interesting to see what happens with that. Um, reading is a great, another great way to spend time together. Um, you can work it in as part of a bedtime routine or part of a midday routine to kind of help settle emotions during the time. Um, Singing songs is a great one. There's a bunch of songs out there. Um, cooking or cleaning together, even if it's simple things. I know sometimes you maybe not want a toddler trying to make something super elaborate or cutting things, um, but things that are at their skill set. But engaging your kids in anything that you're doing, they're going to be really excited about it. And anything really that they're doing and spending time with you is going to help relieve that stress as well. Um, you can always make crafts. There's homemade Play-Doh. Um, things like that. Um, and don't underestimate the power of pets too. Um, even if it's just, even if you have a fish bowl, um, spending time cleaning the tank or feeding the fish or watching how the fish is reacting to different things. Um, but pets play such a crucial role in us learning to regulate our emotions. Um, and so they're important as well. So it could be spending time together, taking the dog for a walk or playing with the cat or like that. Um, I also want to talk about some environmental considerations for helping kind of de-stress. Um, music has really shown to be helpful, um, that your body can react and like calm themselves down um, when there's a, when cortisol, which is the stress hormone, is released. Um, and so some that can go faster if a child's listening to music or is comfortable with music. So that's just a thought to consider. I mean, obviously it's going to depend on the music because some music's probably going to amp them back up. But there's calming music. Um, there's a lot of apps that are free that have relaxation music or ac acoustic versions of songs or piano versions of songs, um, those sorts of things. Um, it's also maybe helpful if they have a calm down or de-stress place um, that they can go if they're feeling overwhelmed or even if they just want to spend some time there um, and have some things that can engage a lot of their different sensory needs. Um, so if there's a blanket that they like or a certain texture that they really like, having an object with that texture in there, um, thinking of if you have any sort of essential oil stuff, um, there's a lot of scents that are really calming. Um, even consider like a sound machine or a sound app so there could be music. Um, there's a lot of free sound apps out there um, that have calming sounds like waves or the forest or crickets or water. Um, those sorts of things, um, but also considering like if there's calming lights or if they need a calm down space where they sit in the room in their room in the dark for a little bit, um, things like that, and then some other activities so you could put like crayons in there for them to color or other things that you're okay with them doing. Um, so that's just an idea. So thank you for your time, and that is all I have. So thank you.